To continue the series about first person view flying, I wanted to talk about the frequencies that are available for FPV and what was available here in the UK without a ham license with the equipment that you'll probably use to control the aircraft. When I first started getting into FPV, I found this really confusing and there wasn't any clear explanation of what you need to consider and what was and wasn't available. This is correct as of the time of recording. This is recorded in June 2014, so things when you watch this may have changed, but the information about how the frequencies work and the other bits and pieces will be right, or should be, but double check. So what we'll do in this video, we'll talk about three things really. The first thing we'll talk around is the actual frequencies that are available for FPV that you may be reading about on the forums or websites that you're visiting, what they do and whether or not they're available here in the UK. Secondly, we'll actually then talk about uh, power ranges and the tr transmitter types and what you can and can't use here in the UK with and without a ham radio license. And then finally, we'll delve into 5.8 gigahertz and we'll talk a little bit about some of the challenges that you might find with the 5.8 gig band. And then we'll do a last little chat about range. So if you'll bear with me, we'll run through that in the next 10 minutes or so. So the first thing we'll talk about is the available FPV frequencies in the UK. Now, these are the ones that you'll tend to hear in the forums. So 900 megahertz to 5.8 gigahertz. Now the challenge that we have here in the UK is that if we run through these top to the bottom, only one is really available for us to use as a digital video transmission. 900 megahertz unfortunately is not available here in the UK. It is uh, illegal to use now because I think it was 2009 uh, that band was reserved for use in 3G mobile telephony. So that 3G signal you use on your mobile phone is using that, so we can't. 1.2 and 1.3 gigahertz. Uh, 1.2 is used for other purposes. In 1.3 gigahertz, you will occasionally come across that being used in the States um, for ground-based um, transmission. Uh, again, we can't use that here in the UK. 2.4 gigahertz, that's a very busy band. Things like Bluetooth use it. And also if you look at the frequency on the side of your microwave at home, you'll find that works on 2.4 gigahertz as well. But that is the one that most people are using these days for their control system. So for Saba, Spectrum and others, if you look at your radio, you'll probably find that your radio is sending information to fly the craft and move the control services and uh, control pitch elevation, etc on 2.4 gig. Now we can't use 2.4 gig to control the aircraft and to also FPV at the same time simply because they would overlap and you'd have lots of noise and you would one get very messy video and two lose control of your craft. So that leaves 5.8 gigahertz available for FPV video here in the UK. So you have your 2.4 gig radio and you have a 5.8 gig FPV system. Now there are lots of different ranges available here in the UK for you to use in terms of power. Um, they go typically when you're looking for the transmitters that you go on the model you'll find that they're rated from anywhere between 25 milliwatts up to 1 watt and above. Now 25 milliwatts is, um, is fine, you might get a couple of hundred yards out of that with circular polarized antennas. Um, 100 milliwatts, you get a, probably four, 500 yards ish. 250, you'll get a bit more. 600 will give you the maximum range, but at 600 milliwatts, you're burning through quite a bit of power and generating a lot of heat in the model as well. Um, so in the UK, unfortunately, without a ham radio license, you are only allowed to use the 25 milliwatt um, power band. So be aware of that. If you are using 100 or 250, you should really have a ham radio license. So now we've talked about the power ranges. We've talked a little bit about the bands that are available for us here in the UK. Let's talk about how we actually fly this stuff and how it works. So here's a little uh, diagram and we have a little model in the air and we have our little FPV guy in his uh, dapper green shorts um, looking through his goggles at the camera view out of the aircraft. And those signals are coming down the field and go hitting his aerial 
and the aerial is being converted into video for his eyes. Brilliant. 5.8 gig is a very short wavelength and the reasons that other people use those longer wavelengths those 900 megahertz 1.2 1.3 gigahertz is that the longer wavelengths have more penetrating power so you can think of them like you know the analogy would be a bullet so unfortunately you know if you look at the 900 megahertz band that's a magnum you know that'll go through anything uh, the 5.8 gigahertz band at the other end of the spectrum is a little BB gun and that will only go through several sheets of paper uh, before it gets stopped and that's part of one of the problems with this technology is that you need something called line of sight anything that gets between you and the transmitter irrespective of how powerful that transmitter is the signal will not get through it so I've had problems where I've flown behind or uh, behind the tops of trees and have the signal break up, but luckily the momentum's carried me out the other side and I've picked it up. So be very careful of that. If you get a tree or a wall or anything in between you and the craft, you will get video dropout and even worse, you might lose the video altogether. Now in that situation, the best thing to do is actually to increase the throttle and rise above the obstruction to get the video back to then pick up orientation and fly it back home. Or you hit the throttle and you flick the switch on your return to home feature on the model so that it will then clear the obstruction, come back so that you can pick up video and then take control again and continue the flight. Second problem you have with our friend uh, 5.8 gigahertz is something called multipathing. Now, multipathing is where as not only does the signal in the short wavelength um, get stopped by um, bits and pieces, trees, whatever, it also is reflected very easily. So it bounces off stuff. So one of the worst things you can do is actually stand in front of something that will actually reflect the signal back at you like a, a thick wall, you know, a, a stand by a house or those kind of bits and bobs. Because what you'll find is the signal coming off the craft will bounce off the area behind you and your goggles will then not only get the radio signal clean from the craft, it will also be getting those echoes and reflections from around you. And that will cause a major problem with the quality of the video. So be careful of that. So with those two things being said, um, how can you make sure that if you're not stood in front of a wall and you're not intending to fly the craft um, behind anything else, which is always a good idea, um, the other last thing you can do to make sure that you get a decent flight out of it is something called the 10% rule. And that is where whatever distance you are away from the model so say you fly the model 100 feet away from you you should always be expecting or trying to keep the height about 10 percent of that distance so for that 100 feet you want the model 10 feet off the ground if you're going to fly 200 feet away from you ideally you want it 20 feet off the ground and that helps with the reception from the craft and also helps avoid some of those problems that we've been talking about so remember that 10 percent rule when you're flying and finally, we'll talk about FPV ranges. There's lots and lots of stuff on the forums and people's experiences are very unique depending on the technology they've got, how electrically quiet the craft is, where the aerials are situated, whether they're using WIP style antennas or whether they're using circular multipath polarized antennas, the power of the transmitter, um, whether they're in an open field, whether they're stood near things that are reflecting the signal back at them, the height the model's flying at, weather, traffic, sunspots, G imbalance, everything will affect the range. So don't get too hung up when you're starting an FPV in particular about the range. Concentrate on getting good enough with the 25 milliwatts if that's where you're starting and then look at increasing the range and getting your ham radio license as you become more proficient and want more distance but if you read in a forum that somebody got one and a half k of distance with a 250 uh, milliwatt transmitter that doesn't mean that you can fly one and a half kilometers away from your position in your local flying field and have the same experience it's very specific 
So with that said, hopefully that's useful for those of you who are looking at this and that um, clears up a couple of questions. If you have any questions left, please pop them in the bits and pieces under the video, comment, subscribe, and if you need to speak to me, my help out channel is now available. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.